never include your personal opinions your personal interpretations of what you see in your answer every sentence that you write needs to include a number needs to include a date needs to include a direction but if everything has not been given there then you need to include that information as well into your introduction and in this video we are going to talk about writing task one and we are going to specifically look at a map type question hello everyone welcome back to the success academy youtube channel i am shashan dice and in this video we are going to talk about writing task one and we are going to specifically look at a map type question all right so if you watched our last video you probably have an understanding of what a part one question looks like you also have an idea of how to structure your writing part one answer now i'm specifically talking about academic writing part one so we are looking at report writing here now you already have an idea of how to write a constructive report and in this video we are following the same structure as last time now in the last video we discussed a line graph but in this video we are going to be discussing a map type question all right so i'll recap on the structure real quick for those of you who are watching this video for the first time the structure of an academic writing part one answer any answer whether it's a map process line graph pie chart bar chart table regardless of the question type your structure is pretty straightforward you need to have an introduction an overview and a body paragraph you don't need to have a conclusion because in our overview we are already writing the overall idea of the diagram that we see so therefore we don't need to include a conclusion if you just write an introduction an overview and a body paragraph that is more than enough what do we include in our introduction in our introduction we paraphrase the question all the information that has been given in the question we put it and we write it in our own words in the introduction furthermore aside from the information that has been given in the question i told you we need to take a look at the headings that have been given in the diagram whether it's a line graph or a pie chart it doesn't matter we take a look at the headings that have been given and we cross examine to see if all those headings have been included in the question if everything is there you have nothing to worry about just paraphrase the question but if everything has not been given there then you need to include that information as well into your introduction all right if you're if you're still confused about this go and check out our previous video i explain about this in detail next we come on to the overview in very simple terms the overview is the overall idea of the diagram that we see in summary what has happened that is basically what we are writing in our overview then we come to the body paragraph now this is where our answers will differ all right when we wrote the line graph when we wrote the answer for the line graph what did i tell you i told you that every sentence that you write needs to include a number needs to include a date needs to include a direction whether the line went up down sideways stayed equal what happened to this line but when we are writing the answer for a map when we are writing the answer for the body paragraph of a map we have to negate this information because when we look at a map check out this question all right do you see any numbers here no you don't see any of those things we do see directions though all right directions in terms of north south east west on top of at the bottom on the left on the right we see those directions but we have no numbers we do have dates and these dates are important but that is not the focused vocabulary when it comes to a map type question one other thing that you have to keep in mind is when you are writing a report when you are writing your answer for academic task 
you don't have to give your opinion we discussed the marking criteria as well you know that you have to have task response lexical resources coherence and cohesion and grammatical range and accuracy again you can go and check out our previous video i've attached a card somewhere here you can go and check it out i've discussed the marking criteria in detail as well one of the most important information that you have to keep in mind is that you should never include your personal opinions your personal interpretations of what you see in your answer all right with that in mind let's check out this map based question all right let's have a look at it okay so you can see three different maps 1962 1985 and now that's the present day the maps illustrate how meadowside village and fonten which is a neighboring town has developed over three different time periods 1962 1985 and the present compare the differences in the maps in about 150 words right pretty standard it's a standard question now again keep in mind the word count although they say write in 150 words our target word count is about 175 to 200 okay so first let me list out groups of vocabulary that you will find useful when answering a map type question all right first of all you need to know the prepositions of place because when we are describing maps we are describing either two or three places locations that have changed over time that has been demolished over time all right and we need to write about what we see relative to the other places okay this sounds really confusing so let me just give you an example if you take a look at the map here in 1985 you would see that the meadowside village had a leisure complex and a housing estate now relative to the leisure complex where is the housing estate is it on top of it is it next to it is it on in front of it where is the housing estate relative to the leisure complex now if we are looking at it straight in our map it's on the left right the housing estate is located on the left of the map therefore it's on the left of the leisure complex so when we are writing and when we are describing our maps we need to write relative to something where is the other thing located and for this we need to know the prepositions of place so here are some prepositions of place that you will find useful when writing the answer to a map type question first you have at the top at the bottom on the left on the right on the other side in front of opposite behind next to close to these are some extremely important words to know especially if the cardinal directions are not given for example in this question you would see that north south east and west have been given so you can write your answer relative to those directions you can say for example the housing estate is to the west of the leisure complex instead of saying to the left all right but in this map type question the one that we are discussing the cardinal directions have not been given therefore it's a bit tough for us to determine okay what is north what is south we don't know all right so therefore these prepositions of place that i just mentioned are very important then if we are talking about the directions you have north south east west northwest northeast southwest and south east right these directions are very important and you should study it you should understand it simply because you will have to use it when you are writing an answer based off of a map right our next set of vocabulary is if something is not there if something that was there in the previous map but is not there in the current map so if we take a look at this question if you see the farmland that was there in 1986 but is not there at present then we can say this farmland has been demolished or this farmland has been dug up all right it's not there anymore all right so if you are trying to use that phrase that it's not there anymore it's no longer there we can say demolished removed eliminated 
omitted, pulled down, knocked down, taken away, dug up. All right. Any of these words you can use to show that something that was there previously is not there anymore. All right. I hope that makes sense. Next, coming back to our question, you can see that in 1962, Meadowside Village was virtually empty. There was literally nothing located on Meadowside Village, right? But in 1985, you can see that a number of things have been added. Added, all right? If something has been included or added newly, then we can use a specific set of vocabulary. We can say built, added constructed, opened, included, or established. Any of these words can be used to show if something has been added now that was not there before. Then if something has been changed in size, take a look at the roads. Back in 1962, the roads were really small, but now the roads are really big. They have expanded. So if we are trying to showcase that something has been expanded, something has grown, changed in size, doesn't necessarily have to be grown. Maybe it has reduced. We can use certain verbs to show that this has either increased, enlarged, or it has gone down, reduced. All right. So we can say extended, expanded, enlarged, reduced, cut down, diminished, shrunk, dwindled. All right. Any of these words we can use to show a change in size. Next, if something has changed, maybe something that has been there has been replaced. Something has been modified. We can use a number of words instead of the word changed. All right. So changed, modified, replaced, modernized, grown, developed, paved over, evolved, altered. All of these words can be used instead of the word changed. All right. Aside from this, we can also say converted, redeveloped, made into, relocated, transformed. Any of these words can be used to showcase a change in the maps. So this vocabulary will really help you write a good, strong answer because one of the marking criteria is your ability to use good vocabulary, use good lexical resources. So if you're using the same words over and over and over again, if you're going to repeat the word change five times throughout your report, it means your vocabulary is limited. But if you are able to use four, five, six different words instead of that same old word, then you can go for a higher band score. The other thing that you have to keep in mind is that you always have to write your answer in passive voice. Now, this is the same for both processors and maps. Passive voice means something like this. The roads were extended. New houses were built. A new car park was built. A new leisure center was constructed. Someone has already done this. Maybe the government has come and constructed a new car park. Maybe a new businessman has come and constructed a new road. We don't know. The subject doesn't matter. It's always object-led sentences. The car park was constructed. By who? We don't care. All right. So we always try to write in passive sentences. Okay, the subject is not the leader. The object is the leader of the sentence. Make sense? All right. Next, let us take a look at how this answer has been written. All right. Now, if you're aiming for a lower band school, right, maybe a band four, you know, you're very average, you're very basic in your language. You don't have a lot of vocabulary. You're really not sure what to write. This would be an answer that would get you to a lower band school. All right, not a very high one, simple vocabulary, not very complicated, but it will do the needful. All right, look at how this answer has been written. The maps show how Meadowside Village and Fonten changed from 1962 to 1985 and now. Meadowside Village got bigger and joined with Fonten to become a suburb. The maps also show differences in roads, houses and places. You can see the vocabulary is really, really simple. 
there is also no overview in this question so obviously you're not going to get a high band score your band score is going to be at least below a band 5 all right in 1962, Meadowside and Fonten were not connected and Fonten had a train line to the north. Meadowside only had a small road from the west. Here, directions have been included. Now, that's a risk to take because directions, the cardinal directions have not been given in the question itself. So you are making assumptions. All right, you're making assumptions as to this is the west, this is the north. It's not a bad thing to do, but it's risky. By 1985, both places got bigger. The small road in Meadowside became a main road going to Fonten in the east. Meadowside got new things. Like, look at, look at how basic that vocabulary is. Meadowside got new things. We don't say that in a formal report. And also, before we move on, take a look at this question. We've included a conclusion instead of the overview. ILTS specifically requests that you need to write an overview, especially from band six upwards. If you want to get a band six and upwards, you need to have an overview. If not, your marks are going to be deducted. So a conclusion is not going to cut it. You need to write the overview directly after your introduction. All right, next we are going to look at a little more advanced answer, not as bad as the one we saw earlier, but there is still room for improvement. So if you take a look at this, the provided diagrams illustrate the modernization of Meadowside Village and its neighboring town Fonted across three distinct time frames, 1962, 1985 and the present. Overall, look, an overview has been included. Overall, throughout these periods, Meadowside Village has undergone substantial growth, eventually merging with Fonten to create a unified suburban area. The diagrams effectively highlight significant changes in infrastructure, housing and facilities over the specified time frame. In 1962, Meadowside and Fonten were distinct entities without connecting roads. Fonten featured a railway line spanning the area, while Meadowside was linked by a modest road extending from either side. In 1985, both Meadowside and Fonten had experienced considerable expansion. Notably, the modest road in Meadowside underwent a comprehensive upgrade, becoming a central road that extended across the entire landscape to connect with Fonten. Alright, so I'm not going to read this entire answer, but you can read it for yourself. You can see that I have not unnecessarily predicted the directions. I haven't said north, south, east, west. Instead, I've said on top of, below, on the other side, alright, spanning the area. These prepositions of place have been used instead of the cardinal directions because the cardinal directions have not been given. So unless they're given, don't use them. If they're given, definitely use them. All right. But if not, make sure you use the other prepositions of place. Now we are going to look at an even more advanced answer. All right. Let's take a look at this. The provided diagrams depict the evolution of Meadowside Village and its neighboring town Fonten across three distinct time frames, 1962, 1985 and the present. Overall, Meadowside Village has experienced considerable expansion, amalgamating with Fonten to form a suburban area. The diagrams also highlight notable alterations in infrastructure, housing and facilities over the specified periods. In 1962, Meadowside and Fonten existed as separate entities without connecting roads. Fonten featured a railway line traversing the land, while Meadowside relied on a modest road extending from either side. Both Meadowside and Fonten had witnessed substantial expansion by 1985, resulting in the modest road in Meadowside undergoing an upgrade, becoming a main road that seamlessly connected with Fonten. Additionally, Meadowside experienced significant development with the establishment of a housing estate on the left side of the map, a leisure complex to the right and a supermarket strategically placed next to the main road. Alright, so you can see that with the vocabulary that we use, the answer just keeps on improving. So make sure to take a good look at the vocabulary that I gave you in this video and also take a look at the three different questions that I have given you and understand the differences that have been given. And most importantly, practice at least three to four maps 
before you go for the exam so that you have a clear idea of what to write if you ever get that type of question. All right, so with that, we are done with today's video. I sincerely hope that you learned something important about writing your answers for writing part one and specifically for a map type question. If you want to get your hands on our comprehensive video course and our free information bank, including all the vocabulary, sample answers of different questions, reading tips, writing, listening, speaking tips, speaking practice papers and mock practice tests make sure to call us on the number below and get yours today don't forget to subscribe to the channel and don't forget to let us know in the comments below what type of videos you would like to see in the future what areas are you struggling with do let us know and we will be more than happy to help you out so share this with a friend and till our next video keep practicing <music>